Hi everybody and welcome back to Salvaged by Sammy. I'm Samantha Stoddard and today we are going to be trying to duplicate this buffet from Pottery Barn. Now this piece is $2,700 and it's probably not even real wood. So I found this buffet at a thrift store for $200 and we're going to try to make them look the same. Before we get started, make sure to follow along on all my other social media channels and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. I got this piece from my local thrift store and at 81 inches long, this piece is massive. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you know that I always start with cleaning. Whether I'm gonna sand or strip, we give it a good wipe down first. This will remove the layer of grime that's on it and allow the stripper to make better contact with the varnish. I then dumped some stripper all over it and spread it out with a chip brush. Chip brushes are basically just cheap disposable brushes so you don't ruin your good brushes. The whole reason I'm even stripping this piece is because I really want the wood grain to show through the black. This will just give it an extra little detail. Now I could start right away by just sanding, but I tried that and it took me five minutes to get through like a five inch by five inch section because this varnish is just so, so thick. I added some cling wrap to help trap in the moisture of the stripper, allowing it to work better, and then I got to stripping. That always sounds so funny when I say that. Anyways, this is probably the most satisfying part of any furniture flip that I get to do. I love stripping off the old varnish and just starting to see the wood that's underneath, even though I'm going to paint it. I prefer to work in smaller sections when I had the cling wrap on. That way I can just pull back each section and I don't risk letting it dry out. I then moved on to the doors. I'm not stripping all of the details, just the major portions of this piece. And then I moved on to the afterwash, which will help remove any leftover grime and residue from the stripper. This afterwash is almost pure acetone, so make sure to wear proper PPE and definitely thick gloves. I love using a scrub pad to just scrub off all of the leftover residue, and it helps get some of the stain off as well. It is looking quite funky at this point, but we are going to sand it and clean it up. And as always, I've added more to my garage floors. Next up, we're gonna sand with a 100 grit sandpaper. So this is actually the only grit that I'm gonna use other than a finishing grit because I don't want to close up the grain. I really want this piece to have thick wood grain showing through the black, so I'm not gonna go any higher. We're then gonna go in with a grit that's between 400 and 500 and just run it all over the piece to smooth it out. This will remove any roughness that the 100 grit left over without closing up the grain. Prior to painting or shellacking or adding any stain to your piece, wipe it down with a tack cloth. This sticky cheesecloth is going to remove any leftover tiny little particles and dust that's on your piece. I had already wiped it down with a microfiber rag, but clearly I missed some. I plan to paint this piece in coal black by Fusion Mineral Paint. I don't have a set ratio of how much water I add to water it down, but probably about three to four tablespoons. I always find it easiest to mix the water in the container, shake it up, and then pour it through the filter. After that, we got to spraying the entire piece down with our first coat, and then I will go back over the opposite direction and do a second coat. As I go vertical the first coat, I will then go horizontal for the second. This allows me to make sure I don't miss any spots, but I will still go over with a third coat, only touching up spots that need it. Once we're done painting, we're going to move into drilling holes for our new hardware. I get 99% of my hardware on Amazon or Hobby Lobby. These cabinet hole spacers will make your life incredibly easy when trying to drill new holes. I like to line it up and then decide which hole I'm going to be drilling in and make a mark right above it. Then I'll flip it over to the next drawer and do the same thing. This way I don't accidentally mark the wrong hole. I put it back on the first door and then use my Sharpie to make a dot where I want to drill my new holes. These spacers are incredible because you don't have to worry about the spacing, the heights, the distance, everything, and they're just automatically going to be perfectly even. 
I then added a drill bit to my drill that's about the size of the screw and drilled into the door where I had placed the dot. And then I realized I did something really bad. Whenever you're working with rotating power tools, never have your hair down. This increases the chances of your hair getting sucked into that power tool and we just don't want to deal with that. Once my hair was up and out of the way, I moved on and drilled the rest of the holes down the buffet. Prior to applying our top coat, we'll use these rad pads from Surf Prep Sanding that are about 600 grit sandpaper. We'll run them over the entire piece, which will remove any unevenness from the paint and just give the total look a super silky finish prior to top coat. Right before we add the top coat, we're gonna go over it again with a tack cloth to remove all of the dust that was created by that 600 grit sandpaper. After two full coats of paint and a spot touch coat, we are adding the top coat. With dark colors, it's really hard to avoid streaks, sometimes even when you're using a paint sprayer. To avoid this, I like to add a little bit of my paint color into my top coat, which will also avoid the top coat being a little bit cloudy. The final step is to add your new hardware back on. I love the way this antique brass contrasts the black, and I went back and forth with whether I wanted to add them to the top or the center of the doors, but I really thought the top just made it look a lot more sophisticated. Here is a reminder of what this piece looked like when I first picked it up from the thrift store. Here's the piece from Pottery Barn I was trying to recreate, and here is the final piece. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you loved it as much as I did. That piece originally from Pottery Barn was $2,700. In total, I put $200 into recreating it. So we saved ourselves $2,500. Make sure to hit subscribe so you guys do not miss next week's project when we completely upgrade an Ikea dresser.